Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Chicago 16 inch softball hall of fame. Another great one today as we um, talk about a team from Bridgeport called the crush, the Bridgeport crush. And to uh, my left and my right are the Balestris, uh, Big Mick, uh, who's going to be to my left camera wise and to my right, young Mick. We're going to talk about a lot of things about a team that was very dominant from its start to its finish. It's just incredible some of the things I have in front of me, and uh, we'll start uh, this today. And we're even going to talk about uh, grandfather and father and a beautiful picture that they have and an article that took place in April of 1999 in a great magazine that I wish would come back to Chicago, the Chicago Magazine which has the full article about the uh, Bridgeport Crush. Gentlemen, uh, good afternoon, and thank you for coming in. Thanks for having uh, me here. Yeah, this, here. Is, this is fantastic. Um, to my left, of course, today we're going to visit with uh, uh, Big Mick and Young Mick, but we're going to talk to Big Mick first, and, of course, Big Mick, who was, I uh, want the, our audience to know, was inducted into the United States uh, USSA Slow Pitch Hall of Fame. That was in 1999. And of course, inducted into the Chicago 16 inch softball hall of fame in 2002. And of course, young Mick to my right has many accomplishments that we're going to get into. But we'll start off with you, um, Mick. And again, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, young Mick. Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here. This is great. How does it start for you? And uh, because everybody I talk to in this building or anybody I see that's been a hall of fame or any capacity here, uh, is passionate, and I see the passion with you every day yeah. when you're in that audience. We always have the passion. We still have it to this day because I'm still out there throwing around a little bit when I can't uh, see your ball and stuff. But uh, I, like, real quick, in, in, in 1982, I had my own teams in Bridgeport. And we were Bridgeport Foods, the Foggios, Jim Bogues, a bunch of different sponsored teams over the years. And Tommy Duddleson, Joe Rivacaro, Dennis Arrigo, these guys are on a McGuane Crush softball team. And they were the champs for a couple of years in the 18 and under leagues. And these guys just got out of high school. So they wanted to move up a notch. They wanted to go to Donovan. Well, I already had my team at McGuane on the same nights. And they asked me to play. And I said, sure, I'll play. And I was about seven, eight years older than most of these guys. And uh, I was 27. They just got out of high school and stuff. So uh, we kind of arranged the schedules at the park so I could make a lot of games. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> you have to have some pull in the neighborhood. You have to have some pull in the neighborhood. Right? Three, three, games, pull at the three park. games in one night. <laughs> if I didn't have any pull in the park, nobody did over there. But, uh, yeah, so we did that, and, uh, and I played with them in 82. Before that, they had four or five years of experience already in the youth leagues. So they moved, they wanted to move up, move up, move up. So I went and played with them. My first year, we finished high for fifth with the Marauders. They came from Kelly. They were a major team, kind of coming at the end of their time, but they were still good. We tied them. We beat them in the playoffs. We get to the playoffs. Wow. We beat the two seed. We beat the three seed. We go up against who? Our friends and rivals, the Stickmen. Uh, who are, who are, who are the teams that done it. You're bringing some, back some great names. All the Calher brothers. Oh, wow. All the Calher brothers. Yeah. So, you know, a hundred times a year. Yeah. <laughs> the rivalry with you. Uh, yeah. So he's, he's in the dugout. He's a baby. He's four years, years old. old. Five years right. Old. Right. He's with me. And uh, we're playing these guys. We took them to, they beat us three to two and 14 to 12. Next year, I brought five of my guys over. Kind of moved some guys out from the cross team. I brought some players over, established a little bit more veteranship. And we got to the finals again. We beat the stickman. In the third game, probably the largest crowd I've ever played with at Donovan, and there was a thousand dollars bet on this game. You, know, you had a bookie on this side, you had a bookie on that side. Everybody was covered after the guy with the party and playing the national anthem. We had a loudspeaker on announcing the game. It was crazy. Wow. And, and we happened to get the best in that game, and we beat him. Actually, beat him pretty good. But you know, played another year, and then we won another championship a couple years later. Yeah, I mean the dominance then starts. Got, then we got out. Yeah, the, then, then we rolled. Then we this was rolled. And I mean, I see right from '85 on. I mean, this just continues. Uh, uh, there are so many notes here in front of me from '85. The Marillo Tourney, the Blue, uh, the Blue Island Class A champs, Angels Tourney, McGuane Park champs, RBI Tourney, Snowball. I mean, this goes on and on and on. I mean, make you made this really easy for me here today. And uh, but you always have to kind of uh, revamp it a little bit each year, tweak it a little bit each year well, to keep with the competition. Here's what we did for the '80s. 
we had the original Crush guys and what I brought over from London to that team. <clears throat> In 88, funny story come out. I got a phone call. I tell the story all the time. I got a phone call. To this day, I don't know who called me. There were seven Crush guys at a meeting, and I'm here with him, and he hung the phone up on me. That was the start of the jinx. Oh, uh, uh, okay. So that was originally Normandy Crush. There you go. Come which, which you'll see <laughs> another team with the Normandy Crush in 86 were playing for the championship at, at uh, Normandy Park in South County Economist had the headline in the sports column, Crush versus Crush, winner gets to keep their name. Oh, wow. Which right. I didn't know that was kind of the outgrow of the old Normandy Crush. They were going to sure, get into sure, the sure. So we happened to win that one. Two straight that night. So, you know, over the, the offseason, I get the call and Seven guys. I find out seven guys. No one told me. Wow, incredible. But, but you know, as the story went out, four of them come back to me. Two of them stayed and one left. Wow. So, but uh, that, that's how that's. Uh, by the way, we uh, are here at the Chicago 60 to softball. That is the voice in the background of uh, Rich Hennessy. If you hear some comments, Rich, well reversed in the game. Uh, we have a lot of people here today uh, listening in. I want to bring in young Mick. Uh, Mick, so. Yeah. You know, just hearing a dance version of you being in the dugout at five, six years old. When does it kind of kick in for you before we go back to dad a little bit of some of his great stories? Yeah, we talked about this last night of how hard my, my memory does go back. And uh, I, I can remember the that Donovan championship just because it was like the most people I've ever seen. Wow. Um, and he taught me how to keep score uh, when I was very young. And as long as he allowed me in the dugout, I was keeping score for all of these moments that, that he'll bring up. Um, had a passion for the game, loved watching him play, loved the uh, the neighborhood uh, rivalries, uh, something that is missing from the game now. Yeah. Uh, it just was different. And uh, I, can, I can remember a lot of that stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it was it was a great time. It was, it was really fun to watch, really fun to be a part of, and it really started my love of this game. And until I started, was old enough to start playing myself. Well, I mean, you know, seeing you know some of the guys because you know for me everything's always first impression. You mm -hmm. know, I always bring this up at a lot of these things. So seeing some of the guys their dad played, and they you, you know when you see them now, was it like holy cow, that's you know Kelleher, holy cow, that's the guy from Stick by G. It, Jackman. I mean, I could still do that now. Like, I, it's amazing. Like, you know, I, I'll go. I'll go to. A, I'll go to a Sox game, and uh, it, it, it's a, it's on faith. These are and these are major league baseball players. But uh, you to watch a guy like Johnny Keller in oh. softball. You know, uh, the guys that he played against. And we were talking earlier today, watching some of these uh, Hall of Famers that are on the tapes back here. I can recall seeing them the first time they played when they were nineteen and twenty, and I'm like, these guys are. Tremendous! They're, they're amazing athletes, amazing softball players. So yeah, I was I was starstruck as a as a little kid watching softball players. Absolutely. Yeah, just knowing what they could do, seeing them hit the ball, see them feel the ball, and great, great. I gotta ask you, Mick. I'm gonna go back to uh, to you for a sec, Big Mick. Do you remember that first time when Young Mick was out there with you? Yeah, do you remember now? Oh my God! Hey, I'm playing in a game today with my son. What went through your mind? Well, that's a drill that only happens once. <laughs> exactly. It one time. Yeah. So he played, he was 16, I believe. He yep. played second base in the neighbor league in Canaryville. And, uh, and we, won, we won the championship that year. Okay, so he played that year. He was a little squirt. He was about 5'4", about 120 pounds, if that. We were just talking yeah, about that this morning. He didn't hit a growth spurt until he was between 17 and 18. And uh, so the next year, which is 95, we happened to win the first uh, new trip A Nationals in Joliet. He's on the team. So he got a national title at 17. Wow. Okay. That's true. So, and he played some. He batted a few times. He got some pitch running in, played some deep. What year was this? He was 95, but he was a part of it. 95, right. Okay. Was, that was, that was the national team. champion year. Yeah, that was in Joliet, the first new trip. Yeah. They yeah. called the World World Series, but that was the name of their tournament. And and uh, we went out there, and that was his first one with us. And from then on, uh, he was playing right field to second base. He was 18, 19 years old. He's at Hodgkins playing in the pro league. And he's over here playing for Forest Park, no gloves. He was a teenager. So I threw him like a fire. First, he could run. He could throw. He was learning how to hit. Sure. Because that's, sure. that's the hardest thing to do. Oh, yeah. Still he, knew, learning. he knew the game. <laughs> he knew the game. Because he learned from me, I learned from my dad, I went right down the line. And he said something about scorekeeping. I taught him how to chart a game at five years old. 
So he was in a drug. I'll tell me where he hit this inning, he hit that inning, he hit this okay. inning, left field, right field, long. Ball. So he's your Google of the day. He's, yeah. he's, 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 my, he's, my, he's yeah. my info guy. In the yeah, he's your info guy because uh, you know, back then uh, we didn't have stuff like I, that. I learned that from Eddie's own. Okay. Yeah, I was a bad boy for Eddie's own and the Bobcats in the 60s. Yeah. 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 All full circle. Yeah. So Something around around that, around. you know, back then we didn't really look at, but now you had this. Hey, you had this. Okay, what did this guy do? You know, I think I had a little heads up at times. You know, sure, sure. I'd be going to get a scoreboard. That was very innovative. Let me ask you this question before I go back to him. How was it for you? Because now, uh, with other members of the team, were you managing and basically you were the manager and the player? I was player first, manager second. Okay, <laughs> but now you had to be objective about him. Did you yeah. know that he could be as good or bad on the dance floor? To play at that level, did you know going in, or were you gonna? Uh, no, you didn't go in there with the attitude of "This is my kid; he's playing." You know, f you guys. No, absolutely not. Let me tell you something. He waited his turn many years to okay. get the starting line. He just wasn't okay. thrown into the fire. Right. I mean, okay. I threw him into these games. Yeah, but he was coming off the bench many times. A lot of times he just pitch run. Okay, a lot of times he going for some defense. You know, sometimes in his in his early years he would play when we were we were stuck a couple guys and he would start. And but we didn't lose nothing. He he supplied what we needed. Sure. He, sure. He, 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 he uh he finished the game like anybody else would finish the game. He played like he should play. And he, he was learning from everybody on the field. Exactly. And you got a guy 15 years old next to him playing in, in center field, you know. He was learning from him. Right. You got a guy 20 years old over here learning from him. With all this experience, sure. Plus, Absolutely. plus I always say the eye test and and being on the field and playing. You can never learn more than playing the game. You can only learn much by sitting and watching. Yeah, you get the you get the gist of it. You have to play the game. Wow, incredible, Mick. Yep. Uh, do you remember those? Uh, I asked him how the feeling. Do you remember going there? I mean, uh, I'm going to use a, uh, the N word here. It's nervous. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, Later. like I said, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen years old. Your dad says, "Hey, you got this. You're going to go in." But I was like, I was begging to play for three okay. years before then. Yes. But I knew I wasn't ready. I mean, I, I probably wasn't ready at 16, but his, the team that he had was, was really good in the neighborhood at that time. So those guys made it easy for me to, to, to find a spot to play in where, you know, I wasn't hurting them. I could learn. I could do what I needed to do. But, uh, no, 100%, I remember the first game uh, that I got to play at Boys Park at 16 years old. I remember it fondly. Yeah. You remember uh, the, where he put you the first game? It was second base, and I had one swing in that game, and I, for some reason, thought I could hit the ball to the right side when I never had a swing, and I popped up to the second baseman, and so he pulled me in a dugout and said, you're fast as shit. Do not hit the ball in the air ever again. And wow. for five years, I hit ground balls and beat him out. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, he's playing second base, but to play that position, that right side in softball, oh, you that. have to be prepared because – all these guys that can go to right dump, you know. Well, that. I'm pitching. So exactly. I'm, I'm setting them up. Right? Yeah. I'm setting my defense up for how I want to pitch. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. and uh, we had a little play me and him. we segue off the subject a second. We used, sure, no, no. We used I do this at times, Don't worry about it. Yeah, you can quite see I'll answer 10 minutes later, but I'll tell you a couple no, things in the middle. We can always go back and forth, yeah. So we had a play on me and him, <laughs> and with the short center, he plays second base. So I drag all the way to the right. I moved my short center over what was like we're overplaying the hole. And the guy on second is watching the short center. He knows he can get off the base. Well, I, I give a hesitation, count my foot one back, and not every time, but some of the times he sneak in, we nailed that guy. It's just right up. Uh, you got guy's face froze. Just yeah. a little flip back. A little flip back. Sneak in. And he was nowhere near the base when the play started because everything's this side of the field. Everybody's I did the attention's all here. I'm pitching the guy I want to go in. I'm dragging that way. I'm looking this way. Tell my short time. Left field, the left field, they're watch the line. Everyone's pointing over there. The runners are looking over there, and I'm just walking right to second base. I'm just standing there as soon as the ball comes. So you just gotta get to him. As soon as the one fake, the ball comes behind. You just gotta get to him. Yeah, you guys you know, Rich, Richie was in Arizona when we they did it. I think we did it three times. They they did did it it time. Again, we're trying to see it, in our it, audience so try to get it. Just show out of state and picked up it, guys. It was, it was, I said we had, we had at least three times we picked up guys in this tournament. Yeah, that, that, going yeah. back to when he was a young guy in the dugout, you, you know, talking about the chart games, everything else, you follow the to, 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 to the team. I got to tell you, I mean, again, we went to going through these championships. I wish we had a full day here and Paul could <laughs> order us another pizza. But uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, uh, again, I want to. 
to thank Paul Rohn, who sets aside the 2 o'clock hour here every Saturday at the Chicago 16-inch Softball Hall at Fame here in Forest Park with the audience, the, the setup, and everything. Paul has done a tremendous job and to bring in you guys, these Hall of Famers. But to go back to this Bridgeport crush is amazing. You know, I'm just looking at a page that you sent to me just about 10 minutes ago uh, in 2000. I mean, the ASA qualifying champs of also. Uh, then in Jilly's classic champs in Berwyn. Um, Richie got the hit and also to win that game. Richie, you remember the hit? I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell me it was a bunt. It's the first year he played with him. The first year he might have been a triple. Yeah, I had yeah, him yeah. throwing it out there. Yeah. Might, might have been. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a big point because it was 32 teams. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and we got our national bid mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. all the and that was in all set, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, that's it was a lot of teams. Teams. That's a lot of, I mean, that is a yeah. huge yeah. amount of teams. Yeah. I'll go on. That's great. Thank you for bringing yeah. that up. And then, of course, there's Jimbo's Ball Classic, the Crush Spring Classic, the Berwyn, the Forest Park, the ASA National. And by the way, I want to tell our audience that in 89 and in 95, you guys were national champions. Yeah, the U.S.A. started at the, the, that division in 89. We were the first. And uh, me and Richie go back a long, long way because yeah. we defeated his team in yeah. the championship in that second. tournament. They beat us. Yeah, Crush beat us. You know? And the name of your team at that time, Richie? Oh, uh, that, that year, Irving Red Hot. Wow. Yeah. And, then, and then he turned around and his cleanup guy, we walked him for the Kelly Park Championship. He was four for four <laughs> to get to Mitch. Okay, bases loaded, two outs. We're up three runs. Two thousand dollars for the Kelly Park Championship. Walk me. Hits the ball off the top of the light tower. <laughs> Ricochets off, walk off, grand slam. We lose to the. They walk me to get yeah. to my cleanup. <laughs> now you wonder why I came and played for the crush after that. <laughs> How many years did you play? Yeah. Crush? How many years did you Since play? Since that year. Uh, so, uh, 24. twenty-four years. Yeah. Twenty-four years. Yeah. Now. And of course, you've been a part of it since what? Yeah, yeah, eighty-two, eighty-three. This is going on 42, 42 years. Forty-two years. Forty-two years. And then young Mick. Uh, 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 yeah, like ninety-five to. Oh, nine. So, so I mean, and then you know, now that I'm old enough, I can start joining them for the 45 and over crush. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go too fast. You know, you know. No, we did it. No, but I mean, I want to slow down the age level here. They were in the battery last year for the 45 uh, nationals, uh, and uh, uh, big Mick pitched. Mickey went and caught him. We put it on video. The uh, father and son actually were the battery of that last year. That's 68 years old. 45 and, and old. Make, so well, that. make 45 years old. We pitched three innings each and again. Yeah. Wow. Was, so you knew, see, that's what softball is all about. Yeah. That, the, yeah. The family atmosphere, passing the torch on, father, son, grandson. You know, it's so important, the fabric, you know. The, the fabric of it, sure. Yeah, it was, it was, it's good stuff. Any, anybody in our audience wants to chime in, uh, with our uh, microphone can pick it up. So anytime you hear something of a, that you want to say or a mis, uh, or correct something, not a problem. Uh, you know, the thing here that comes up with me in all these notes, when we say you came in second or you came in first or you came in fourth or you came in fifth, the thing is here is that the mount number of teams you know 28 32 39 teams when the, you guys played in cedar rapids 13th place let's say in the asa national major there were 39 teams to come in 13th place i mean i'm not picking that as the just the pick on but it's fantastic i mean you gotta you're not playing uh b players are you <laughs> you're playing yeah i do 160. Yeah, now Mick is pointing something out to me from 1987. One, probably our biggest win ever. Yeah, 116 teams that were entered, ranked number one by the Sun Times in the Class A, and these were the Chicago Park District Metro Champs. Yeah, it was, it was called it the Ring Tournament. Sure. We won uh, only two tournaments: the Whips beat Southside Liquor Safari Tigers the year before that, and we beat the Southside Liquor Safari Tigers in the next year. And Budweiser provided ten thousand. Yeah. By the way, I want to get to that because that just came up. I'm trying to keep this in some kind of, and yeah, uh, back on that. But give it a shot. Yeah. The nineteen. 19... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 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 beating me to the questions here, Vic. But that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> the Chicago Metro uh, Budweiser Park District Champs, 1987. Talk a little bit about that. A seven and all record, correct? Yeah. We we played at Reese Park in a in a preliminary qualifier. Ran in Austin area. Yes. Okay. It's about 98 degrees, smoke it hot, everybody sweltered. We, we went through four games. We're, we're playing West Side Express, and 
We played them before. They're a very good defensive team, but we're playing without gloves. So it's it's, it's a regular tournament, and uh, they got a six to one with two outs in the sixth inning, and we went triple, single, triple, single, double, single, double. And I speaking truthfully, sure. The hit that tied the game was my my cousin Bruce. He gets a line drive so hard it bounced and went over the second baseman's head for a double to tie the game. So and my brother-in-law Mike took one down the left field line for a double to give us the lead, and we hung on. Got us to Grant Park. We played the Flamingos. We beat them four to two. We played Southside Liquor Safari on Chicago cable TV. On TV. Broadcasted There's live. There's a video somewhere. Broadcasted live. And we beat them four to one. And they had five Hall of Famers on their team. Yeah. Wow. Very good team. Yeah. And uh, we were a, still a very young team. And uh, that was our big, big hurrah, so to speak, at that point. And that kind of like put us on the map, I think. The the eighty seven thing. Yeah, yeah, and they you know and they took notice of that and. Uh, well, you you because you beat a team, the Tigers had won had two second place major national finishes. Yeah. The prior two years before, and all she had to play at that team. that team, and right. they were an A team. You were playing one of the best major teams now. Wow. Okay, that came off of two second place finishes, only to lose to the touch and the whips. Whips. The yeah. prior years in major and national. That is something. So, that, is, uh, that was a, that, that, that was, was a monster big accomplishment. Up. That was a monster accomplishment. At that time, for us, for anyone, we were, we anyone, were sure. Yeah. But see, we were ready, all ready to make the move up to the big top level. Although we played everybody at that time, we sure we, didn't, we sure. didn't miss a team. We played against everybody from that point on, eighty-five on, and that's when that phone got that phone call. And the next year, and all the team kind of went sideways. I had to retool. You asked me about retooling. Retooling. I didn't answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I get five minutes. I'll get that. Yeah. So I lose guys. I got to retool guys. I grabbed a couple 18, 19 year old kids from the neighborhood, a couple of veterans I picked up. We went to the national. We happened to lose the championship that year. Right. Well, you know, with the team that I didn't have the year before. Sure. But we had a team of this. Art. Without that, yeah. Desire, yeah. maybe a little bit less ability. Sure. But we busted our ball last year. And we, we played hard. We lost our first game on eight in a row. That was the championship game. Right Between the two, you had to see great players all the time, right? Oh, yeah. And the, well, and, you know, and the one thing that, that Big Mick was able to do is, uh, with all these retooling, whatever, whenever you pick up a guy, 19-year-old, 20-year-old, or a veteran you know, coming from another team, he was always able to get the maximum out of that player. Got so it. For whatever reason. I don't know if it was just the respect of playing for sure. him or anything like that. Because he wasn't, he wasn't hard on anyone, anything like that. But it's just like... If you had a guy who you know played on a big team, struggled for three years, looking to you know try to retool himself, come to big mix team. Now this guy is back on track, and he just that's what he was able to get out of a lot of those players, and that's why no matter how many, how much the roster was a turnover year after year or this or that, he always had one of the best competitive teams and guys who were always ready to win for him. It so, sounded like there was a lot of respect for you uh, guys. Uh, what uh, I got to ask you, yeah. you being of course the younger. Did you have guys your age who say, hey, man, how do I get on this course? Can you get me on? We'll talk to you, Jed. I mean, did you have that going? I wish I did. Uh, I, I was like the only one. Uh, I bring this up with uh, Chris Downs, uh, played with uh, Players Inc. last uh, last year, was retired oh, for a couple of years. years, does a ton for the Hall of Fame. Sure. When we were in high school together. None of our friends wanted to play. They wanted to do anything else but that. But, yeah. Me and him are the only guys out there. Out there every game, every day. Still he watches his brother. I watch my dad, and and then we. So when we were able to play, we played. Uh, don't forget, Robbie, your nephew. You brought him into the. Well, we don't have to talk. I was just going to touch that. <laughs> 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 we did bring a younger person in. But no, well, you're right. I mean, I wish, I wish we, I would, for all the years that I seen guys leave his team, and then he's like, okay, well, we all got to have these meetings. We got to find more guys. I wish it was so easy, Mick. I got five. Five athletes I hang around with, they were there ready to play. I didn't have that luxury to do. So he had to do all that work himself, unfortunately, and was able to do it. And was and like able said, to do it. And like I said, you know, year after year, these aren't the same guys. You know, these no, aren't the same no. team, but year after year, you see first place, second place, you know, over and over. And that's just what he was able to do. I mean, as we even approach, and I'm going to, I want to go back to some, as we approach even the early 2000s, the mid 2000s, it's incredible. I mean, you know, co champs, first place, uh, Clyde Park. 39 Lover Berwyn League Champs. Uh, I mean, uh, LaGrange Park. It's amazing how you kept this consistency, right. consistency. And again, it comes back to one young Nick says, like, 
it's they know, hey, this guy knows what the blankety blank he's doing. Right. You I, know, I had a lot of guys that really like hanging with the group that we had. Sure. One thing we did, camaraderie part was outstanding. Okay. It was outstanding. We very rarely did we leave the park and not go hang out. Right. Okay. Okay. One or lose, right? One or lose. lose. I mean, it might have been a long night. We got done at midnight. We'll go to McGaffrey. She's been our sponsor for twenty something years. Yeah, matter of fact, yeah, we're gonna touch on some of these. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. But there's a lot of good. These guys have to be mentioned because sure, without that, without we we don't we don't work without these people. Right. We we don't work without these people. But before that. And then Mick breaks away and he starts his own team for many years. I know we're going to segue up the crush a second. That's oh, okay. So, <laughs> so he starts a vision team, and I'm, I'm I'm backing him up now. I'm the backup pitcher. He's sure. the pitcher. He's the manager. I'm coaching. Okay. And I'm playing when he needs me. Well, after, after the first first tournament and a couple of league games, said I can't do this anymore. No. He said I can't play and run the team. So he had, now I got to do it. Wow. So now I'm playing manager. So you saw at that <laughs> level. Okay. Absolutely. So I should go out here. Absolutely. <laughs> so he, yeah, absolutely. He seen what it was, but I don't know how he did it probably. Right, right, right. You, right. Know, you know, we had a pretty good year the first year. We got upset in the Nationals, which we shouldn't have. The next year, we 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 figured it out. We figured it out and, and oh, won the, the initial uh, SSA nationals. That was the first one. We were the first one. Wow. So and uh and I told him his job is done, go back to crush. <laughs> and that's, and again, again, I started getting my old guys together and putting teams in leagues again. Yeah, absolutely. You see in the 60s, oh, yeah, the 2000s. It, oh, my God. It, 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 it's, it's a list of, it's incredible, just incredible, uh, all, all these uh, things. You know, let's touch on some of the sponsors because then I want to yeah. get into this article that's yeah. fantastic. It's a great article. The, the, the sponsors, the, I mean, if I can mention them all here, scoreboard in, you know, uh, Chips Bar, second time around, Jose Cuervo, Jack Daniels, Tito's Tribune, Lynch's Bar. That. Heroes, we got some, yeah, 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 some like that. There it is. And by the way, up above us here, you're looking at here, well, you'll see the cross jersey way above in the corner there by the black jersey that says the Titans. It's, uh, it's, it's hidden a little bit. A little bit, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's hidden. We're playing possum. We're playing possum. Uh, sorry, sorry, it. play. <laughs> sneak around the corner and see. But it's Top notch, Studio 31, Jimbo's, McGaffer's, DeVoggio's, Hometown, Tap City. I mean, we can go on and on. And guards in. Yeah, we, we don't want to slay. Yeah, guards in. We don't want to say uh, the, the plumbing company. Yeah, right here. There, right there. there it is. Right there it is. The plumbing. I don't. I don't. I don't forget nobody. Number eighteen, no. Ryan Hennessy. I'm announcing now on the I field. Don't, I don't forget. Top Notch has been my sponsor since 1987. He wow. Like Sixteen. Okay, and fantastic. He, he made this happen. I mean, this top is, notch, this is a vintage hat. You got the, the Top Notch shirt on. I got the Top Notch shirt. And the Top Notch shirt. They brought their uh, shirts here. Yeah. I got to tell you, just I mean, fantastic yeah. tributes. This is something that I didn't expect when Paul uh, gave me the original notes on this. Like I said, it was a term paper for me. But I have to tell you, we could talk and talk. And, of course, some of the stories, which I'm going to get into uh, at the end, I'll, I'll supply it for both of you. The, uh, the magazine, Chicago Magazine, this came out in April of 1999. I'm going to hold it up. And it's still in mint condition. I think uh, this on eBay is about a million dollars. But I, <laughs> I only have one. I only have one of them. It's the magazine cover. And when, before we sat down today, uh, Big Mick told me that a uh, the the gentleman who wrote the article, a journalist, Andrew Sandella, uh, basically had to write a softball article uh, that, uh, that that spring and summer and told Mick uh, that, you know, he was going to write this article. There, it, it's just fantastic. The article is about six pages long. Yeah, uh, Six pages long. And even uh, young Mick is mentioned in this article. It, it's fantastic. Ronnie right here. Ronnie's in the picture. Okay. Ron, Ron is in here. Yeah. Who's in our audience Ronnie today. Ronnie Risden, yeah. yeah. I got to tell you, uh, what caught me and gave me the goosebumps was they had gone to Cedar Rapids that year. And Andrew Santella, the the article started, Chicago's unique version of softball play bare-handed with an extra large ball has been an enormous popularity, um, which has now been taken over at that time by Nintendo, suburbanization, and <laughs> just the, the, and the cell phones. <laughs> but here it is. Santella basically followed Big Big <laughs> Bellis Jerry to Cedar Rapids to finish the article that was published in Chicago Magazine of April of 1999. This is fantastic. You talk about a safe keep. This is fantastic. It's in mint condition. I really don't even want to touch it and not even, you know, like 
put my fingerprints on the pages, but yeah, and then yeah, it goes um, here to one twenty two. Let's get to it. I just want to see myself here. Yeah, there. Yeah, diamonds in the rough. Yeah, here, here it is, right here. Got it. Yeah, and there's another picture of it. It just goes. I mean, it just goes. It kept going and going and going when this was truly the magazine to read in Chicago. Yeah, if there's a thousand fields in the city, nine hundred of them are laying dormant, growing weeds. If we don't get kids to play this game, it's gonna die. Santella wrote, and this was fantastic. And maybe I'm sure that's a quote by you. And then, of course, we talk about. Uh, Young McBellisbury, his 20-year-old son. And if anybody can get their hands on this on a digital, it, that's on pages 124 and 125. I mean, this is, when I saw this, boy, this. It's a lifetime keepsake. Yes, and it's probably one of the better articles that was ever written about our game, gentlemen. It's a human interest story. It, oh, it, relates, it relates to the people. And, and, and you talk about softball, and actually, but it's the trials and tribulations of the team. When you read the whole thing and you get the gist of it, you'll see some stuff in there that you won't believe you put in there. Oh, it's 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 amazing, especially about the Nationals. You know, especially about the Nationals at the end of the year. It's very rare to find a family like yours that I'm going to use this word has done it right. I mean, here in the short time and maybe the year that I've seen you from yeah. coming here for these interviews. I see him in the respect for you from the other colleagues here in this building. And when I saw young Mick today. His passion for the game, of course, start at five years old. I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to give you two. Do you remember a tournament or two games or a moment that, wow, man, you knew that, and this, this is something I'll never forget. Yeah, the, 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 the moment that always comes to mind, uh, and I tell my dad all the time, is uh, right here, right at Forest Park. Forest Park. When they had the TV Pro League, and he'll know the year, I won't know the year. Um, but I got, uh, I was young. Were Cashel and North doing the games? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause Mike North gives me, gives me my props. <laughs> I, uh, I get put in the pinch run, uh, late in the game and I'm on first base and there's a line drive to left field, normal line drive. And I go first to third and there's no throw. And, you know, normally, you know, you, you see someone on first base, you come up you, you, as a left fielder, you're ready to throw the ball. And it just, I just, at that time, no one believes me, but at that time I did have a lot of speed. I was much lighter back then. And I went first to third on a base hit, one hop to left field. And Mike North is, is heard on the broadcast. Look at this kid fly. And uh, the funny thing is, is I was out late one night with a group of friends from the neighborhood and they were replaying that game at like three in the morning on oh, sports wow. center, sports station. I yes, think. yeah, a sports channel. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And my 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 buddy said he went down to his room to go to sleep. He just put on the TV, and that was on. And he called my house at three in the morning to tell me you're on TV. You're on my TV at three in the morning. And he goes, and Mike North is saying, "Look at this kid fly." Uh, but to play in that pro league, and it's been talked about on some other podcasts recently. Um, that TV pro league was just like the highlight of softball. Like you're on TV playing yeah, softball, TV. playing yeah. softball, and Mike North, you know, six seventy to score. Like this is a this is a famous broadcaster exactly. calling a sixteen inch softball game. That game being announced, being on that was when I just that was my coming out of, of to be like a softball player. I wasn't just. You know, Big Nick's son playing on his team exactly. in the neighborhood. Sure, I was. Sure. I was now part of six inch softball community. That that's what I remember. That's my big moment. And you know, at that time, Nick, everybody was watching that. Everyone I remember was Sunday watching. nights. I was pictured to that sports yeah. channel watching that with North and Cashel and yeah. learning about all these different players. And Absolutely. God, I wish I could play in that league. I wish I had the talent to play in that right. league. So yeah, it, everybody knew. Who were the top and for them to see that highlight? Absolutely, oh, you know it's something else. You know how big you see how big that is. What he just said. Yeah, he didn't get a hit to win the game. He didn't make a diving catch. No, he didn't get the tying run. No, he went from first to third on the side. First to third. He got accolades for that. Accolades. See what sticks in his mind? Yeah, because yeah. he was he ran his ass off to get there. To get because there. we were down by one run. We lost that game by a run. He was trying to score if there's a bottom. Sure. Okay, sure. don't get me wrong. I know. The little things that become part of the game. It could be part that of the game. Yeah, exactly. That, that he learned. Fantastic. That, 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 that was, I didn't expect, so that was a great one. Well, listen, I mean, 
I'll go back to you, and then we're gonna. I want to end it with something really yeah. nice. Yeah. But um, I got to ask you. You know, from the time you started to now, did you ever think you'd get to this? To all this, which we, you know, we had to break down a freaking tree to get all this. <laughs> uh, yeah. no. Well, you don't know that. No. That's only half. No. That's only half. I got a whole forest there. <laughs> don't worry about that. Wait, my ball popped. If you invite me to the house one day, you better bring me. I was kind of ready to tell Row it off the other day. <laughs> no, but this is good, true, the hard shit. No, I don't believe it. Something really deep. Besides, I mean, this is a big moment. Oh, yeah. Blame me to something. Of course. And of course, you being in two halls of fame, what goes through your mind and your special moments and all this? Well, here's a couple of things, real quick. And I want everybody here. So I remember, me. real quick. I remember, <laughs> I remember Mick getting his first hit against a major team to win a tournament game, and he had never win against Arizona Ice Team. I talked about it with him. How old was he? You think then? Nineteen. Uh, yeah, it was ninety-seven. You said okay. Uh, so. 19. So he hits a liner between short and third with two on and two out. We win a game to advance in the tournament. That was one. You guys probably said that all. Probably more of a thrill for me than what. Yeah, no, sure. sure, sure. Okay. Two. Anytime he took the field with me, you know, I, he'll tell you we butted heads many times. Oh, I, I, I didn't get into many that. disagreements. He's a pitcher. I'm a pitcher. You always right. So no, no. <laughs> I, I was always right in my mind. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> okay, and he has a difference of opinion, but. But we banged heads, but when we put it together, that goes a lot with all the success or all the years we played. With. Sure, sure. So, you know, he's handing the reins over to me later on on his team, and we were successful in that, which was a plus. But I, I got to tell you, I can tell you, uh, on a personal level, when I got into the Triple SA Hall of Fame, he introduced me. Oh, wow. And that, it could tears in my eyes. And that was a nice little okay. trip for this little yeah, guy. Nice, yeah, wow, that, the Illinois U trip softball. So sure, this, sure. this is great. So now, fortunately, I get in as a player manager here. Yeah. He didn't want to go up. I said, go get your ass on stage. I want you to do something. I had nothing. He had nothing. He had nothing. He had nothing. For the first one, I had, I had a big yeah. list. I had a, so now you go. You're going, you're going, going to do some ties. I made him take off his jacket. You're going up, up there. Right there. Right there. You're going. I just went up there. And he goes, no, I want you to do it. He, go. We weren't going to. I went up there. Sure, sure. Talk for 10 minutes and. Just standing ovation. Yeah. So, in, 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 yeah. And, and to, to finalize on that, hopefully soon enough it'll be my turn, and he'll have an opportunity one way, shape, or form to get into this Hall of Fame in whatever capacity it is. I want to be out there. Well, we might have to revamp some uh, Hall of Fame criteria well, to be in there. And, 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 and I and I and I and I that, that would be <laughs> the culmination. Of everything starting from this guy, yeah. my dad, to me, to him. And, and I got to tell you, this, oh, we're going to, yeah, I want you to lay, either one of you can Man, don't forget about There is a beautiful picture that the Gillespie brought in. And uh, this gentleman, probably the dapper of the bunch here. Yeah, 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 yeah right here. Tie. Tie. That's my dad. Uh, what year is this, guys? 1957. That's my dad, Rails Gillespie. Always ends in that cell, Rich. There you go. And that it was, is in the hall. That that the in the this hall. Is, in the, this is in the Chicago this community. That. That's all yeah. right here for that, was, that was in 1957. I was two years old. My dad was on the team. They won the Illinois Championship. What was the name of the team then? St. Albert the Great. St. Albert the Great. Beautiful. Yeah. Black and white. Oh, I remember here in the city champions, 1957. And Look at these. All yeah. Italian guys. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, want, you want me to go through the list? No, 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 no. no. You're good. You're good. You're good. 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 You're good. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to go to the horse. You got some throats in there, hey, too. Right? And, and the other throats. side of the case is this trophy, my wow. dad's trophy in his hand. I, I donated it over there. And there's a couple of balls and glass cases. Incredible. Yeah. His name's on it. My mom's name's on it. And I got to tell you, I'm going to hold it up again. The scores are up top of the games. Yeah. If you notice, Except the last one got cut off, I believe it was 13 to 2. The little two. detail, but just 1957, we are talking 67 years ago. Just just fantastic. And the Bobcats played at the KC's in the 60s and 70s. A lot of Bobcats. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that what, a, what a tribute to your dad to bring in this picture. And of course, this is here, I think. One more thing that you forgot watching your son win a major national pitching. Well, I wasn't done yet. That's not corrupt related. We don't have to talk about that. Right. And I ain't the energy again. Watching the Yeah. I wasn't done yet. <laughs> I know you're not done yet. I know. No way to forget me. Oh, you will segue back and forth. Yeah, I know. Back and forth. And we did a great job. Listen, gentlemen, I, I really, uh, this one was probably one of our more passionate, of course, our first uh, 
father and son, uh, one okay. that we were able to get the, the two yeah. together. But um, in coming here, Mick, all the time, this man, you uh, talk about great. this great team. This is fantastic. When you want to do part two, we, I, I got a feeling I'm going to have to ask Paul for a part two, Mick. You, you might have to do it if I had more, more sessions. Than and our audience baseball. today, thank you so much for being. This was fantastic. And again, I have to say my famous line, which I didn't say, Liz, again, this Bridgeport crush, the Bellestries, the audience, Mr. Rowan, we are part of a dominating bunch. <laughs> have a great afternoon.